If you've been wondering how to use your email list to make sales on Teachers Pay Teachers, but you feel a little bit awkward or weird sending that formal sales email because you don't want to sound salesy, well, we have a treat for you today. Melissa Seidemann is an email marketing expert, and she's going to be talking about how to write sales emails to send to your email list, what kind of sales emails you should be writing, how often you should be sending these out, what they should look like, and she's going to be giving some practical examples examples of those in this video. So I want you guys to go ahead and meet Melissa. Hey, Melissa, how are you? Hi, good. Thanks so much for having me. Good. I'm so glad to talk to you today about email marketing, which is your specialty, and to talk about how to write a sales email, how to not feel intimidated about writing a sales email. But before we get started with that, can you just tell the listeners a little bit about you and a little bit about your TPT journey so far? Yeah, I am a 15-year history teacher. I left the classroom in June of this year. My husband conveniently got a job across the country, so we moved and I left the classroom and I started doing email marketing full-time. I was selling on my own website and I love doing it. And I have my own TPT store too. And it just kind of started with email marketing for my own business. And then people started hiring me for it. And then more and more people started coming to me. And I was like, wow, this is something that I love doing. I have a passion for it. It started as a hobby. And now it's a full-blown career, which I absolutely love. I love how it seamlessly can transition from people saw what you were doing and they really wanted your help in their own business. But can you talk to us a little bit more about how you got started with email marketing in your own business? And what did that look like when you first started? Oh gosh. So when I first started, I was so nervous. I had like four subscribers. And then when I reached a hundred, I like went out to dinner because I was so excited because I reached a hundred subscribers. And now I look at my email list and it's crazy to think how profitable and how marketable it is. And you like look at the growth that you've had over time. It's pretty amazing. I started with four. And the best part about your email list is no one has any idea how many people you have on your email list except you and a VA if you have a VA. So the biggest mistake I see people often not doing is not sending emails. They're waiting till they get 100 subscribers or waiting till they can get consistent messaging. And the reality is they will notice if you don't send emails. So if you have five people, send the email. Be consistent with it. I think that's the most important tip that I always say to my clients and my friends. And so being consistent with those first four subscribers that turned into a hundred that I'm sure turned into a much bigger list today really paid off for you. So now you help other TPT sellers build and grow their own email lists and send profitable sales emails. Can you talk about the kind of success that you've seen others experience or that you've experienced yourself? So people are often intimidated by the, the cost of having that email list. Yeah. And I can tell you just in one email in August, I make my entire bill worth of ConvertKit to pay. I create a new product. I pay for the program over and over again. One of my biggest clients has made $40,000 in the first four pages of TPT search results. So they've made a lot of money and generated a lot of traffic to their business, a lot of traffic to their website, a lot of traffic to their store very easily. I have some clients who send a 50% off email where they discount a product 50% off and they make $3,000 with one email that cost them $50 to send the email from me. And then they make $3,000 off of that email. It's pretty crazy. Those emails that you're sending out, what kind of emails would you say those emails are? Sales emails. I think the hardest thing is people got to, you got to not be afraid to be salesy and sell to your email list. They joined your list for a reason. You have to offer them value nurture them, give them consistent emails and get the trust factor before you sell to them. And don't be afraid to do it. Absolutely. I love that. So most teacher authors, they want to have the email list experience this kind of success, but they're scared of that very thing that you just said. They're scared of being salesy. And so I love that you just addressed that. Like you can't be afraid of sending a sales email. You can't be afraid of sounding salesy. Do you have any tips for helping somebody get over that mental hurdle. I think you need to see them as the teacher best friend next door. And once you put that mindset as, oh, this is Michelle next door, this is Michael next door, write to them like you're their friend. Write to them about the problems you experience in the classroom. Write to them about the problems of teaching a particular subject, whether it's multiplication or English or using rubrics, whatever you wanna do. And then your solution is that product. 
for that email. So if you can write in that way, it's an interesting way to do it because you're addressing the problems, you're connecting with your audience because they're obviously probably experiencing the same problems that you experience, whether you're in the classroom or not. And then you're connecting with the solutions is which is your products or your blog post teaching them about how to do teach that particular topic. So it's not always directing traffic to a product, but it could be directing traffic to a blog podcast. It could be directing traffic to a blog post, to a YouTube video. It's directing traffic wherever you choose to make that call to action. Okay. I love that. So let's get into the meat of this. Can you talk to us about sales emails and give us some examples of profitable sales emails that anyone can write? So someone's listening to this and they're going, okay, this sounds great. Like, I think I can get over this mental hurdle. If it's going to make me money, I can get over this hurdle of being afraid of writing the sales email, but like, what do I put in? Right. Yeah. So generally I structure the emails in an interesting way. So the top of the email is usually trying to connect with them about some type of connection, whether it's the time of year, the season, the holiday, the, the, the mood of the teacher, it's a little bit of connection. Then I do a little bit of a blog post, a snippet of a blog post that I already wrote or a client wrote. So it could be just a couple bullets. It could be connecting the topic to the problem, the solution. And then I say, click here to learn more. And I always connect it to the blog post to drive traffic that way. And then I always say, if you want to save yourself time and lots of hours in the classroom, get this product. So I'm not only giving them value by teaching them about the topic, but then I'm also directing them to the product if they want to save time. I think that e way to do emails is an interesting way because I'm not just selling a product, but I'm giving them value. And then if I have a freebie, I add it right in the middle of the blog post and the upsell. And then I say, here's a freebie. If you like the product, you can get the, the, the bundle or you can get the paid product too. So right. that's an interesting way to do it. Because one of the hurdles that people have is that they feel like if they're writing a straight up sales email, then they're not providing value. But the sort of template that you just kind of laid out, the outline that you just laid out for this sales email is that regardless of whether or not anyone actually purchases the product at the end, they're getting value from your email. Um, and they're looking forward to opening it too. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I love that. So what are some mistakes that we should avoid when we're writing sales emails though? I'm afraid of it being this over the top and this dramatic or what have you. And it's sounding like an infomercial. Can you talk about some of those things? What are some mistakes that we should avoid when we're writing these emails? I do email audits all the time where people actually go have me go into their program and evaluate what they're doing and give them feedback of how to do that. So often the biggest pitfalls I see are subject lines that are too long. People often write these really long subject lines. Subject lines should be under five words or less. Often I put an emoji with it. If you put longer than five words, they're not showing up on mobile and 70% of users are reading emails on their phone. So they're not even seeing the subject line. So they're not even bothering to open it. So that's really important. I use the rule of three when writing emails. And it's an interesting rule that I do. And all my IVAs that work with me and they use the rule of three too. But basically every paragraph should be no more than three sentences. There should be three. If you're doing one call to action, which you should always do one call to action in the email, the link should be in the email three separate times, the top, the middle, and the bottom of the email, the same call to action, because not everyone reads the whole email anymore. They read the top, the middle, the bottom. Some people read the whole thing, but very few. So that's why having the link at the top, the middle and the bottom help. Every image should be clickable. There should be a one button to make sure it's really obvious. Click here to get that same call to action. And then you should always have a PS at the bottom with that direct link, directing traffic to remind them why they read the email in the first place. I love that. Okay. So that's really helpful. Now on that note, because you are a TPT seller, I'm going to ask your opinion on this because we were talking about this in one of my group coaching events. Do you think that, because there's that same format, you know, when you're writing a sales email, you're putting that, those links all throughout. If we're doing a bundle upsell or something like that in your TPT store, do you think we should be doing the same thing in our product descriptions? Oh, I don't even know. Oh, I know that's, that's a good question. I'm putting you on the spot there, but I had that thought actually occurred to me this past week. I was like, you know, why am I not doing this with my product descriptions? I, I haven't pitch? done it, but that's a good idea. As a sales pitch, put it at the top, link the bundle at the top yeah, in the snippet and then put it maybe at the bottom. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. I, I never even thought of doing that. I usually I, use the connecting link tool. I don't even know what they call it, but the, the link to other bundles product. Yeah. But yeah. It idea. was one of those, it was one of those things that popped in my head and I thought, well, I don't know that I've heard anybody else say this before. So maybe it's a bad idea and I shouldn't say it to too many people. So I thought when you were mentioning it just then, I was like, I'm going to ask her what she thinks about that. No, I um, think it's a good idea. All right. So I, I love that you mentioned that about 
putting it in different spots in the emails and about the word count, because I think that that's true for all of us. Like we have a certain message that we want to send out and sometimes it can be a little bit lengthy and we kind of just have this internal struggle or battle within ourselves. But I definitely see that with A-B testing. Like when I've A-B tested that and I've thought, well, this is the subject line that I want to use, but this is the subject line that I should use because it's shorter, that usually the shorter one wins out. So I love yeah. that too. And the same thing goes with email. If your emails are too long, they're not even going to bother reading them. Yes. So keep that in mind too, when you're writing, short and concise always wins. Always Absolutely. wins. I love that. So what happens if you write this email, you send out the sales email, you were nervous to send the sales email out because you didn't want to sound salesy, and then you send it out into flop. And by flop, I just mean like nobody buys the product. What happens then? I think you got to reevaluate, like look at the email, look at the open rates, look at where they clicked because some providers like give you all that detail and see where they clicked. And then it, maybe it just was the wrong time of year. Maybe it was the wrong subject line. Maybe it was the product they don't need right now. Maybe it, their teachers are so stressed. I think that's a lot of factors. You got to consider your audience. Like I have some people who send emails at like 8 p.m. at night. I, I can't tell you the last time I want to open an email at 8 p.m. at night. So that's something to think about. Some people send emails at like five in the morning with Flowdesk. Their best time is 5 a.m. I don't know how many people are checking at 5 a.m. But like, I, you got to think about that too. That matters. Because it could be, and, and I think too, this is something that I hear. And I know that you can have a profitable email list no matter what size your email list is. But I think sometimes people get discouraged in the very beginning when they have like 80 to 100 subscribers and they send out a sales email and they don't get a sale. And so I would want people to hear too, you know, that it could be just the fact that like, it could just be a numbers game. Like if you have a really small email list and you're in the beginning, just think of it as like, this is a, this is a long game. And maybe it might take a while. You might send that same email to them a few months from now and they may be ready to buy them. So, and it's, it's all consistency. Do they know you? Do they trust you? Do you have rapport with them? So so over time, you're going to build that if you're consistent with your emails. And I always tell people, set a goal. You're going to send two emails a month, one email a month, four emails a month, whatever you decide to do, but be consistent with it. That's the most important thing you can do. And you're going to see sales come. It sometimes takes a few months, but like it will come over time. And I think you just got to trust the process. It's like a long-term goal of like blogging. You don't just blog and then expect results right away. It's going to take time for the SEO and Google to pick it up. The same yeah. thing goes with the email. So I've got another question for you that I didn't put in here, but I, I do want to ask you, how often should someone be sending these sales emails? Let's say they send an email every week. Should every week be a sales email or should there be a reprieve or what, what's your thought? What are your thoughts on that? So I try to do about half the emails I send a month. And then I also connect the bundle or an upsell to the freebie. So if they always like the freebie, they might like the bundle, the upsell. And then I always have at least half the emails or have a blog post attached to it or a podcast attached to it or YouTube video attached to it. So I'm trying to direct traffic and just decide where you're directing traffic to. And you could set a goal like, okay, I'm going to have two emails a month be a sales email with a teaching email with a blog post. And then maybe two emails a month be a freebie with an upsell also. So they're there for a reason. They joined your list for a reason. And as long as you're cleaning your list and making sure that's something you're doing too, they're going to stay engaged. Okay. So let me make sure that I got that right. So about two emails a month would be a sales email with that single call to action to go purchase the item. Yep. And then another two emails would be to send them to a blog post or YouTube video or some sort of content. Yep. And then perhaps one of those emails to be the freebie with that. Freebie. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. At least one or two. So if I was doing four emails, I would have two sales emails and then two sending traffic somewhere, whether it's a blog post or podcast. And then two of those four should have a freebie in it at least half and don't make it predictable. I had clients make the first email of the month always the freebie and the open rate skyrocketed the first of the month and then no one opened the last three. So it's like, don't make it predictable. Pick two, change it up. They won't know and they'll, they'll be opening it up. They'll open all of them. Yep. Yeah. All right. Awesome. I love that tip. Do you have any words of advice for listeners who are really tempted to step into email marketing, but they just feel really intimidated by the whole process? I think find a community, find support that works for you. I have an email marketing Facebook group that is free. There's 1,700 teacher authors, business owners in it that literally ask questions every day. I get five to six questions a day. People chime in, find a community that works for you. I know you could be in your group and ask group in your group. 
find a community that works for you, find a mastermind of people that are willing to work on their email list together. I think the support will really help you find your teacher besties that you're going to work with. Absolutely. In RTA, we have people who have just started their email list or they've been doing it for a while and we kind of have different groups and they meet on their own. Like this isn't part of RTA. They just meet in one of the co-working sessions, you know, like once a week and they'll write their emails together or work on their list together. But even if you're not in a paid membership or course or anything like that, you can go into a group like Melissa's and see if there are other people People who are in the same spot that you're in and want to meet with you regularly on Zoom or something like that and yeah. sit down together and do it with other people. I think that's amazing. Yeah. Now you offer a lot of help and support for teacher authors and business owners in the email marketing space. Can you tell listeners how they can work with you or learn more from you? Can you just share where they can find you? I just launched something called Email Power Hour. It's going to be starting March 1st and it's going to be one month. It's a subscription basically where you can join for one month or three months or 12 months and get once a month email support, kind of like a drop in Q and A. It's super affordable. It's $25 a session. And then if you get the year, it's even cheaper than that. And that's a simple drop in. I offer zoom support so I can one-on-one -on -one zoom you. I have an email marketing course coming out soon. And I have a lot of like, you could always hire me to do emails. I do pretty much everything for email marketing and I have a ton of offers. That's awesome. So where can they find you? Yeah, you can find me at not another VA. So not another VA.com. You can find me at not another VA on Instagram. And you can also find me on email marketing that works on Facebook. There's a free group also. Nice. I will link to all of those down inside of the description for anyone who's watching and who's interested. Let's do some fun questions real quick before we let you go. What's your favorite podcast that you're listening to right now? Oh my gosh, I love so many. I love Kristen Doyle's podcast. I'm a big fan of Kristen Doyle's with SEO yeah. and learning all about that. Maddie Fry is a great podcast on just changing your mindset and it's about happiness and changing your perspective on life. So it has nothing to do with TPT. And I love that about it. I love Jenna Kutcher's I love Amy Porterfields. I, there's so many I love. I spend the first two days of every week listening to podcasts. I love them. And I love yours too. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Favorite way to relax? Do you relax as a parent and a business I, owner is the I question I saw. I mean, I mean <laughs> sometimes, you know, sometimes. I, like napping while they watch a show counts, then yes. Oh, I like to nap. No, I like watching like old school shows. Like today, this morning, I went on the treadmill and I walked, which was super nice. And I watched One Tree Hill. I love watching like these old shows that I watched in high school, which is kind of fun. So yeah. I love doing that. That's fun. So. A favorite show to binge watch currently? I guess maybe One Tree Hill or is there something else that you're binging? I'm, I'm binging One Tree Hill. There's so yeah. many seasons. It's going to last forever. But yeah, no, that, what else do I like? Yeah, that's what, the only one I'm going to admit out loud. So yeah, I'll admit out loud. <laughs> I haven't got a few of the same. <laughs> okay. So you're handed a gift card to your favorite restaurant. Where are you going and what are you ordering? So we just moved to a new town in small town, Ohio. So there's really not that many brand names. If I got a gift card, I would go to Target. Like Target really? is an hour, an hour away from me right now. And we used to live five minutes from a Target and we had three Targets within an hour where I used to live. And now we live, I call my husband calls it a Target desert because it's an hour to get to a Target. Wow. I would go to Target. I know that's not a restaurant, but that's where I would go. Yeah. Tar that That's what Blair and I do during the week. If I need, especially if it's the day after the house cleaners have come and I'm like, oh, I don't want to mess up the house yet. We're going to go to Target. We're going to get Starbucks. We're going to walk around the store and kill time. So we're not destroying the house. That's where I would go. Yeah. yeah. So what's next for you and your business? I know you said you have an email course coming out. Tell us about so, that a little bit. Yeah. And so I have... I'm doing an email bingo challenge and I decided I'm going to launch it twice a year. So the email bingo challenge is going to be in June and then in January every year. It's a free challenge and I'm offering $2,000 in free prizes from about 12 different business owners from anything from Facebook ads to mock-ups to Pinterest to all kinds of different things, email marketing too. But I have the bingo challenge of $2,000 in prizes. And I'm going to do that twice a year, June and January, which is great. So you can join the email marketing group, Facebook group and learn more about that. I have an email series. You can join my email list, which I'm going to promote my email list. Yeah. It's, it's free. And I have, I'm pretty proud of it. I think I have a year and a half worth of emails scheduled to go out every Tuesday of email tips. That's free. So yeah, I literally have a year and a half and I add to it almost every week. So it's just this constant email series. So if you want an email tip 
series every Tuesday morning at 7 a.m. You can join my email list. My course is going to launch again in July, and I applied to present at a few virtual conferences. So hopefully I get accepted to do that. So yeah. Awesome. Well, wonderful. Well, thank you so much for being here, Melissa. I'm so glad that you came to share your wisdom and to share about writing sales emails and helping a lot of listeners have a more profitable email list. So thank you so much for coming on here today. Thanks for having me. Have a good day. Thanks so much for being here. If you want to learn more from Melissa, there are several ways that you can learn more from her. Number one, she's going to be at the Teacher Seller Summit this summer, July 6th through the 9th. You do not want to miss it. You can find the link down inside of the description to get alerted when Teacher Seller Summit tickets go on sale. So you make sure and fill that out. You can also find her on her website, notanotherva.com, along with several other incredible resources. You can join her email list to get weekly tips for email marketing, and you can also join her during her email power hour support group each month. You'll find the links to all of that and more ways that you can connect with Melissa down inside of the description. Thanks so much for being here. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it and subscribe. I put out weekly content for teacher entrepreneurs, helping you grow your teacher business in ways that are purposeful and sustainable. And I will see you in the next video.